You'd do it again? I would do it again. Because they don't have a right to touch me. Team 10 investigates a schoolyard game that a student says turned into a sexual assault, and when she fought back, she got suspended. A judge sided with the school, but Anissa Sanchez refuses to give up on what she believes is her right to self-defense. She tells Team 10 investigator Allison Ash that she'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court if she has to. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Anissa is like any other teenager. She likes hip hop. <laughs> plays basketball. That's her, number 15 on the Brawley High Freshman Squad. Anissa also knows karate. She has a green belt. Her martial arts reflexes came into play three years ago on this playground at Phil Swing Elementary. I was like, what? I thought After I After she says a boy who she'd already warned not to touch her reached out and flicked her breast. And I, like, I don't know what happened. I just, like, reacted really fast to it. Anissa gave him a swift knee to the groin, and he went down crying. So I felt kind of bad, you know, but then I was like, he kind of deserved it. You know, like, he touched me, and I told him no. The principal called Anissa's mom, who initially agreed to a suspension. And on the way home, she cried and said, Mom, you've always taught me that if I did nothing wrong, you would have my back. And I did nothing wrong. He touched me. And before he tried to touch me, I asked him not to, and he still did. That got mom's attention. She started asking why the district didn't report the assault to police. She also called her lawyer. The school is at fault, and I'm going to hold them accountable. Dave Miller it. filed a federal lawsuit claiming what happened to Anissa was a violation of Title IX, which prevents public schools from discriminating on the basis of sex. Title IX of our federal regulations require the school to prevent uh, an environment like this where it's a hostile environment. Miller says teachers and administrators knew about the game students were playing, a game he says is still rampant in the Brawley School District. He offered this as proof the district has an ongoing problem with organized sexual assault. A Facebook post circulated among students in 2014 that lists National Grab Boob Day along with days designated for lap dances and twerking. The school admitted they knew about it. They have an obligation to, to change what's going on and they did nothing. That inaction is arguably clearly unreasonable, wrote the federal judge hearing Anissa's case. But he also ruled Anissa only faced a single instance of sexual harassment and that it does not appear to be sufficiently severe for him to find the school district at fault. That judge was 100% wrong. He is completely wrong. And maybe if this were his child, he might see the law a little differently because I have three daughters and I've told all three of them they have the right to self-defense. Anissa says she's forgiven the boy who touched her but can't forgive the school. And they should have been ahead of it. They should have been on top of it. And they weren't. I tell her that I learn from her more than she'll ever learn from me. What have you learned from her? She's strong and never to give up. Now, both the school principal and the superintendent have left the district since this happened. I was able, though, to reach out to Brawley's new superintendent. He didn't want to talk about the case, but he did tell me inappropriate behavior is not tolerated or condoned. This is one of those stories that takes off on social media. Everybody wants to comment. A lot of people commented on our Facebook page and they agreed that the judge was wrong in this case. So why did the law not support her? Well, this is really, really complicated and we reached out to a legal expert to help us break it down. You can find her eye-opening analysis and the judge's ruling on 10news.com.